the movie is set in the quiet mining town of Prosperity, Arizona, where life seems to be pretty normal. Almost all the people rely on mining, as the city is known for having precious gold. The scene then cuts to a truck, which is carrying a large amount of chemicals. Since it is very dark, the driver doesn't notice a rabbit standing in the middle of the road. When he takes a sharp turn to avoid it, one of the toxic barrels rolls out of the truck and falls into a nearby pond. The next morning, a spider enthusiast named Josh is seen collecting crickets from the same pond. He is completely unaware that the water has been polluted. He comes here every day to find insects, which will serve as food for his spiders. The movie then skips to a week later, and we are introduced to our protagonist, an 11-year-old boy named Mike. He is also an avid spider enthusiast, which is why he keeps visiting his best friend Josh. That day, Mike notices that the spiders have grown exponentially larger in size. This puzzles him, so he asks Josh about what he's been feeding them. The latter replies that he found some magic crickets, which serve as steroids for the spiders. Josh also believes that he is going to make a fortune out of his new discovery. As the two continue discussing the strange phenomenon, a dangerous tarantula gets out of its enclosure. Josh then shows Mike a large orb weaver spider, which he has named Consuela. It appears to be extremely poisonous and deadly. After a while, Mike's alarm rings and he says that he has to go to school. He then leaves the place, but not before promising to return the following weekend. Once the boy is gone, it finally dawns on Josh that one of his tarantulas is missing. He desperately begins looking for it, but the tarantula finds him first and bites him on his back. Josh screams in horror as the pain is unbearable, but there is no one to help him out. To make matters worse, he ends up knocking over the other enclosures, releasing all the spiders in the process. At last, Josh meets a gruesome end when the mutated insects swarm him and dissect him bit by bit. The following week, Mike is headed towards his best friend's house when he is stopped by the town's sheriff. She is none other than his mom, Samantha. Mike, who is unaware that his friend is dead, insists that he pay a short visit, but Samantha orders that he go home immediately. She claims that the nearby pond has been contaminated, so the area is not safe. Currently, she and her colleague Pete are trying to identify the harmful chemical that has been polluting the pond. At night, Mike grows really worried about his friend Josh. Since the two haven't talked in over a week, he tries to call him, but of course, there is no one to receive it. We are then taken to Josh's residence, which has been completely taken over by the spiders. The entire place is covered in cobwebs, and the spiders have grown to become the size of dogs. Meanwhile, at the local mall, the town's mayor is making an announcement. He says that the mines have become too old and outdated, so they should build a commercial complex there. He now wants the people to sell their land so that this can be made possible. However, most of the people voice their disagreement right away. Among them is Chris, the son of a mine worker who recently passed away. He comes forward and asserts that he is never going to sell his land. The mayor tries to insult him, but Chris retaliates by punching him in the face. Chris is the hero we all want to be. Fortunately, before the situation can escalate, Samantha arrives there and separates them. She then takes Chris away and warns him to be more sensible next time. As their conversation unfolds, we learn that they share a romantic history. They are still in love with each other, but are too afraid to express it. However, the very next morning, Chris shows up at her place with a bouquet of flowers. He straight away expresses his love for her and asks her out on a date. Samantha doesn't respond to the proposal, but she agrees for the date. Meanwhile, as the two are engaged in conversation, Mike sneaks out of the house. He goes straight to Josh's farm, which has been completely overrun by the insects. Mike slowly makes his way inside and is horrified to witness its state. The spiders are already gone, but they have left enormous footprints on the ground, indicating that they have doubled in size. After a while, as Mike is exploring the area, he spots a massive spider coming out of a cave. This freaks him out, so he immediately makes a run for it. Once he reaches the road, he is spotted by Chris, who happens to be returning home. He gives the boy a ride and asks where he's going. Mike brings out a large tarantula leg and claims that the spiders have gone rogue. He describes that one of them was the size of a rhino. However, Chris believes that the boy is joking, so he simply laughs at this. After returning home, Mike desperately tries to explain the entire scenario to his mom, hoping that she, out of all people, will believe him. However, she instead 
stepdad gets angry, saying that he is watching too much television these days. Meanwhile, the spiders begin their attacks in different parts of the city. At Pete's house, his pet cat is devoured by a large spider. Similarly, in the underground mine, when a man finds that the water pipes are jammed, he decides to blow it with his mouth. As soon as he does so, his expression changes, and a large number of deadly spiders crawl out of his mouth. Then, the queen spider, Consuela, lunges at him from behind and finishes him off. In another incident, the mayor's ostriches are brutally dissected by the creatures. As the days pass, the townspeople realize that they are being attacked by something, but they have no clue that it's a bunch of eight-legged insects. However, that all changes when one day, the spiders finally decide to show themselves. As the mayor's son John and his friends are hanging out, they suddenly show up and begin their onslaught. The remaining boys quickly get on their bikes to escape, but most of them are caught by the insanely fast monsters. Only John manages to get away unharmed, as he cleverly guides the spiders towards a speeding oil truck, resulting in an explosion that kills them. At night, Chris's mom is preparing some food in the kitchen when she realizes that her dog is missing. As she looks for it, she finds a trail of blood that leads her to a nearby mine. Turns out the house is connected to the mine, and only a small layer was separating it. Now, that layer has been torn apart, possibly by the spiders. Worried, the woman slowly goes inside the mine, and this is when she is attacked by some gigantic spiders. They quickly incapacitate her and wrap her in a cocoon. I'd say that she'll come out as a butterfly, but she's already smoking hot. At the same time, Chris arrives home and hears his mother's screams. He rushes to the mine, but it's too late, as the monsters have already taken her away. All he finds is a large spider leg, which makes him realize that Mike was telling the truth all along. In the next scene, Chris rushes to meet the boy, and the latter finally has the chance to showcase his knowledge of spiders. He theorizes that the chemicals have made the insects exponentially larger, and they will keep growing, as long as they have the toxins in their bodies. He also reassures Chris that his mom is not dead, as the orb weavers generally wrap their prey in cocoons but do not kill them. This is because they want to impress the queen by offering her food. Samantha, who is listening to all this, is left completely speechless. Just then, Mike's sister starts screaming in the other room, and when they all rush inside, they find a spider trying to wrap its web around her. Chris tries to intervene, but he ends up being incapacitated as well. Luckily, this buys Samantha enough time to pick up her gun and shoot that insect dead. After this, she tries to call for backup, but all the phone lines appear to be dead. Left with no choice, she uses her walkie-talkie to call her assistant Todd. The latter is very much aware of the situation, and he suggests that they use the local radio station to alert the public. Shortly after, the group arrives at the radio station, which is being operated by a guy named Harlan. Samantha quickly goes live and warns all the people that they are being attacked by giant insects. She requests all of them to run towards the local mall, as it is the only safe place right now. However, the people completely ignore her pleas, thinking that she's joking. This is because the owner of the radio station Harlan is always high and makes insensitive jokes. Meanwhile, a large tarantula is passing by the radio station. When it senses that there are people inside, it quickly launches an attack. Samantha and the group are now stuck, and it appears as if they are going to be killed, but... Fortunately, Todd and the others arrive in time to rescue them. After this, the group heads towards the mall. At this point, the city has been completely overrun by the giant spiders. They are killing people at an alarming rate, causing complete chaos. Meanwhile, a large number of people have gathered inside the local mall. Samantha and her group also arrive, but so do the spiders. The creatures have become so aggressive that they are killing humans with a single strike. Fearing that the situation may go out of hand, Samantha, Chris, and a few others decide to confront them using guns. However, there's too many spiders to take care of. Todd then comes up with a plan. He says that the only way to save the city is by summoning the army. However, Samantha says that it's impossible because all the phone lines are dead. This means that they are totally disconnected from the rest of the country. Luckily, the mayor has a mobile phone, which was a rare luxury back in these days. Due to the ongoing chaos, the network is a bit weak, but he is sure that if they climb the nearby tower, they can make the call. The mission appears 
appears to be a dangerous one, but it is the only chance they have right now. So, Chris and Harlan decide to head to the terrace. Before leaving, Mike gives Chris a perfume, explaining that the spiders have very weak eyesight, so they rely on their smell. If this perfume is sprayed on them, they can be rendered senseless for a few seconds. Chris thanks the boy for the information and then departs. After a while, the duo reaches the terrace and Chris decides to make the climb while Harlan keeps guard. The phone eventually gets a signal and Chris is able to make a call. However, when he tries to explain the situation, the army personnel doesn't believe him and cuts the call. Everyone in this movie is reverse gaslighting themselves. At the same time, a swarm of spiders arrives at the place. In a swift move, Harlan lures them towards himself and then jumps from the terrace. He manages to survive the fall and Chris also uses the distraction to make a run for it. Meanwhile, the queen tarantula, Consuela, manages to destroy the mall's gate, allowing the other spiders to enter. This creates chaos among the people as several of them are laid to death immediately. It's almost like collecting every single person in town in one place was a really stupid idea. When the situation escalates, Samantha gathers the survivors and urges them to enter the nearby mine. Soon, Chris also joins them, and the group realizes that the mine is filled with methane. This means the entire place can explode with even a small spark of fire. As the group ventures forward, they realize that they have actually entered the spider's hideout. This becomes even more evident when they find several cocooned humans hung on the ceiling. Most of them appear to be alive, but time is running out as the queen will be feasting on them soon. When Chris finds the mayor inside of one of the cocoons, hope fills his heart as he believes that his mom is still alive too. He then asks Samantha to lead the group in another direction while he goes looking for his mom. Before they separate, the two confess their love for one another and decide to get married once the chaos ends. Chris also asks Samantha to light up the generator powering the mine as he has a plan in mind. After this, he grabs a motorbike and slowly walks inside the dark tunnel. He eventually finds his mom, who turns out to be alive, but unfortunately, before they can get away, Consuela arrives at the scene, angrier than ever. Chris tries to shoot at it, but then he realizes that if he does so, the entire place will explode. So, as a last resort, he brings out the perfume given to him by Mike and sprays it toward the monster. Surprisingly, the plan works. As Consuela is rendered immobile for a few seconds, taking advantage of this opportunity, Chris gets on the bike with his mom and speeds away from there. Along the way, he places a matchbox in one of the light bulbs. At the same time, Samantha and the group manage to exit the mine. She also finds the generator and powers it. As soon as she does so, the matchsticks ignite and a large explosion occurs inside the mine. Chris and his mom barely make it out in the last second, but the poor spiders are not so lucky. Every single one of them is torched inside the mine, finally bringing an end to this madness. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.